Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna answer a question many of you have been asking me. What is this monitor on top of your camera and why do you use it for wildlife photography? I'm gonna answer that question and I'm gonna tell you the pros, the cons, how you set it up and whether you should invest in one of these monitors for your wildlife photography. First, we need to understand how this works. And it's basically just a mirror image of your EVF. So on these mirrorless cameras, you've got your electronic viewfinder, your sensor receives the light, creates the image, sends the feed up to the viewfinder. All we're doing is plugging in an HDMI cord. The feed then gets transferred through the cord into the monitor and this monitor acts as your EVF. It's pretty much that simple. There's a few different monitors that you can get. There's this type of monitor here, which is the Ninja 5 that I use. This actually has a hard drive in the back of it. This one here is a 500 gigabyte, but they go up to, I think, four terabytes worth of data. Why would you need a hard drive? Well, most of the time people use these monitors for shooting video and they directly record the video on this hard drive. For me, I like to record the viewfinder. So when I'm shooting, you see what I'm seeing and I can record that directly to the hard drive. The downside of that is they are quite expensive. This entire kit here, so hard drive, monitor, battery, cord, is just under 700 US dollars, which is quite expensive. Thankfully, you don't need a monitor like this. You can get a monitor that doesn't have a hard drive built in, and they're a lot more affordable. I haven't used one, but my good mate Jan, he used the Portkeys PT6. I think this retails in the US for $169, which is a lot more affordable than this Ninja. He used it, he said it was fine. It was almost equivalent of this more expensive monitor, and he suggested that. I'll put a link in the description where you can check out his video and his opinions on it, but he liked it and I trust his judgment. So the big question is, why would you wanna use a monitor over the EVF or the LCD? And I'll go through this a little bit later in the pros, but simply it's just for usability. It's just just easier for some people to look at a screen as opposed to look through the EVF because it's just bigger. And for example, uh, this is the viewfinder footage directly from a Scarlet Robin that I photographed recently. I can see that exact overlay directly on the monitor here. I can nice big view, focus on it, capture this amazing shot of this male Scarlet Robin. And the monitor obviously enabled me to do that. All right, so how do we set these monitors up? You can see there's a few different bits and pieces in front of me. First, you'll need the actual monitor itself. So buy the monitor. Some of them will come with extra bits, but you have the base monitor. We now need some way to connect this to the camera. If you've got a cage on your camera, you can attach it directly to that. But for the majority of people, we're gonna connect it directly to the hot shoe on top of the camera where you put your flash. So we need some sort of mount. I currently use a small rig mount. This works really well. It's quite heavy duty and it just screws into the actual bottom of the monitor. So we just screw that in. Alrighty, so I've now attached it. We can see that we've got the little mount at the bottom of the camera. And now we just need to put that onto the body. Make sure the monitor's facing you and heaps of times I've done it with the monitor facing out. So it doesn't quite work that well. So we just slide it into the hot shoe and then we tighten that up on top of the camera. And now we have the monitor on top of the camera. So we need some way to send the signal from the camera to the monitor. And that's where our HDMI cables come in. And you can see I've got a few different cables in front of me. Why is that? Well, each camera will have a slightly different sized HDMI port. On Canon, on Olympus, the majority of them have what we call a micro HDMI. So it's a lot smaller than your traditional HDMI. So it's something to be aware of. You have to get the right cord. The other end will have a standard HDMI. So we plug the standard HDMI cord into the in on the monitor, and then we just plug the micro HDMI into the camera, and now that's connected. So the feed will go from the camera to the monitor. So one thing you'll notice with this cord is that it's coiled, and it's coiled for a reason, because if you try and use a non-coiled HDMI cord, they just get in the way and they're horrible to use. That's what I thought. I had one of these laying around or it was cheap and I thought oh, I'll just use one of those, but I used it a couple of times and went, no, I have to get one of these coiled cords. They're just much, much easier. Now, if you happen to own a Sony body, or at least the A7 IV and some other brands, they actually use a full-size HDMI cable. I prefer the full-size HDMI because they're just more robust. These micro HDMI have already wrecked one of these cords. Camera fell on its side and it's a bit of a weak point, the small, and it just bent it and I had to get a new cord. So just make sure you get the right size HDMI cord uh, to suit your camera. Obviously we need some way to power the monitor. Now the majority of the monitors use a Sony NP battery and they come in numerous different sizes. You get a small one like this and obviously a much, much bigger one like this. 
Which one should you buy? It depends whether you are recording footage or not. If you're recording footage, you have to use one of these big massive batteries because it just chews through the battery. I think one of these big ones only lasts well less than two hours of recording footage for me in the field, which isn't all that long. However, if you're just using it as a monitor, they last for ages. So the lighter battery would be much better. So I'll just plug in the smaller battery. Our battery's in, cord. Now we're all good to go. All right, I've got my model, Colin the Cockatiel. Put him down there. We're gonna turn the camera on and turn the monitor on. And so all you need to do is simply turn it on and the feed will go directly to the monitor. So we turn the camera on and we turn the monitor on. These monitors do take a little while to boot up. Um, so the first time you turn it on, it does take a little while. Okay, so now that we've turned the power on, the power's on the monitor, the feed is going directly to the monitor. And the first thing that you will notice is that on Canon bodies at least, we lose the EVF and we lose the LCD. So you lose touch screen ability. And this is a major thing if you use your camera all the time that way, you simply can't. As soon as you've plugged in, you lose this. And that's a bit of a weakness. Um, I know other brands, I think even Sony and Olympus are the same. However, I think Nikon and Panasonic give you the ability to have LCD and screen, which is what they should all do. Um, so it's just something you need to check yourself whether you lose touch screen ability by plugging it in. However, you can access most of the settings as you would via your dials. You can hit menu, you can go into the menu, and set up the menu. On the Canon bodies, you can hit info a few times and go through to the settings menu and then you hit Q and you can access different settings and go through that way. So you've definitely got access, but it's just limited because we don't have that touch screen ability. Now, one other advantage of these monitors is most of them will have some features built into the monitor itself. For example, this monitor here gives us zebras in stills mode. And you know, on Canon, we don't have zebras in stills mode. So now effectively I have zebras, which is fantastic. So I can just turn them on and I've now got zebras so when I'm overexposed, this monitor will tell me that I'm overexposed. So that's a wonderful feature. There's heaps of other ones, but I honestly don't use them because I'm mainly just shooting for stills and I just use it as that external monitor. Alrighty, so now that the monitor's turned on, it's working, what are the benefits of these monitors? And there's a number of them. The first one is just, you've got this massive five inch screen that you can look at and you don't have to bend down into the viewfinder. If anyone's shot on the ground, you know how sore your neck can get. You have to contort yourself sometimes to get the shot with the monitor, it just makes it much easier. This monitor does tilt forward. So you can shoot like this and look down. So if you want a lower shooting angle, say you don't want to get on the ground, but you want to put the camera down, you can just shoot from above down like this and still access it, um, which is fantastic, that's one cool feature. And say you're sitting in a hide and you're sitting in the hide for long periods of time. You know, in the old days, we would just sit in the hide with our eye on the viewfinder, just waiting, 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 and your body would start aching. And then you take your eye off the viewfinder for a rest and the bird would land on the perch and what happened, you'd miss the shot. With this, you can just sit back, relax, look at the viewfinder and you can your periphery vision is much bigger because you're not and on the camera, you can look around, oh, there's a bird coming, I can just quickly go to it, and you're immediately in the action. So for setups and stuff like that, awesome, works really well. For me personally, I've used the monitors a ton in the field, you've seen them in my videos. My recent one with the Olympus OM-1 where I photographed those red knee dotrels, just worked perfectly, enabled me to track the birds, photograph them, you know, compose the shot, and it just work flawlessly to be honest. So I was driving down my driveway and in winter I get scarlet robins that visit and they are the most stunning and beautiful birds. They're here, I was so excited. So I thought I wanna take a photo of this beautiful bird. I've got a massive rock on the property, which is actually very good for photos. So I've actually attracted those robins down using some mealworms that I feed to my chickens and I needed to set myself up. But the rock was a lot lower than my eye line. So I had to set up the camera and it was around sort of waist height. So I simply set up the camera on a tripod. I was using the Sony a7 IV, the 200-600, put the monitor on top, just pushed the uh, monitor forward, stood there, waited for the birds, and as you can see, the male was quite accommodating, and we managed to capture this beautiful shot of this bird. And I was also happy when the female has actually come down, and they usually aren't as colorful, but this female had a very bright chest, which was just wonderful, and I captured a shot of hers. And just on a side note, just that lens, that Sony lens is so good and having that zoom range, I've actually zoomed out 
and you can see this much wider habitat shot of the Scarlet Robin just enables you to take lots of different photos and I was very happy with that wider shot. And you can see in that scenario how the monitor helped me compose the shots and not have to get down onto the ground and just stand there and fire away. All right, so I've talked about a number of benefits of this monitor. There are a few weaknesses and I wanna be honest with you and share them with you. The first one and the obvious one to me is it's extremely difficult to do bird and flight or any sort of action. I think it's because our hand-eye coordination has been trained over the years to look through the viewfinder. So when I see a bird in the sky, I've built up the skills to try and find it. It's very difficult with a long lens to find subjects and that is exacerbated when you're using a monitor because you just don't have that hand-eye coordination. I just couldn't find the birds. I'm trying to go, where is it? Oh, up, down, around, around, and I just missed lots of shots. I just found it so difficult. Maybe over time your skills would improve, but looking through the viewfinder is 10 times easier than trying to shoot bird in flight with the monitor. You can do it, it's just a real struggle. And with action in general, I just find the EVF much better. It's also better for stabilization. You're a lot less stable holding a camera out in front of you like this than up on your eye and creating that three points of contact. And the other thing that I wasn't aware of, but I suffer from lower back problems, as I'm sure many of you do, you'll be surprised that holding a camera out in front of you down low actually causes some back problems. Well, it did with me. So I actually grabbed the Olympus OM-1 and the 100 It's not that heavy of a lens. I've put this on top. You can see the footage here of me in the field holding that camera out in front of me. Now it did work and I was able to find that beautiful Scarlet Robin. It's come back. I went yesterday and it was raining and we had a lot of atmosphere. We had a bit of backlight and I took this shot of the male Scarlet Robin and I absolutely love that photo. However, at the end of the session, I started, go, oh, my back's a little bit sore. And by yesterday afternoon, I was in quite a lot of pain and still am. So I can't shoot that way. I just my back can't deal with it. So if you have back problems, just be aware holding a camera out in front of you like that might do the same to you. But in fairness, I was using this heavier monitor with the bigger battery and the hard drive. If you use that PT6, for example, with a smaller battery, it's not gonna weigh quite as much, so maybe you won't have as many issues. The other thing with this weight on top of your camera, you are gonna create a balance issue on gimbals, especially with shorter lenses, because you've got so back heavy, it's just gonna be really hard to balance that lens. If you've got a longer lens, it's not as much of an issue, but it definitely is an issue on shorter lenses to have all this weight at the back of the camera. And speaking of the Sony lens, um, this is it here. There's one little oddity that I've struck using this monitor on the a7 IV. The Sony body has zebras, which are amazing. They work really well. However, as soon as I plug in the monitor, you lose the zebras. For some reason, Sony doesn't send zebras to at least this monitor. They just disappear. You're probably going, just use the zebras of the monitor. And yes, I could, but for some reason, the monitor zebras aren't working properly when I use Sony. I have them set to 105% and they just don't work. They never come on. I have to set it to 95%, which means the zebras come on way earlier than they should and it kind of loses its function, which is disappointing. So one thing I haven't mentioned is whether these work on DSLRs, and many DSLRs do have live view, so you could, in theory, use the monitor. However, I think from memory, a lot of these bodies have restrictions when it comes to the frames per second. You just don't get the same frames per second, and there might be some autofocus changes as well. So if you own a DSLR and you wanna use the monitor, just look in whether your camera is able to do it and whether there's any restrictions. I'm sorry, I just don't know what they all are. I've only used it on mirrorless bodies myself. Well, I hope this video answered your questions about these monitors and why I use them and whether you should get one. I think they're a great tool to have in your kit bag for certain shooting scenarios, and only you will know whether it's right for you. Which monitor should you get? Well, again, that's up to you. I've only used this Ninja, which works really well, but I don't think the majority of you will need one with a built-in hard drive. Perhaps check the link in the description for Yarn's PT6 little review he did on that monitor to check that out. Otherwise, just visit B&H, Amazon, read uh, the reviews, etc. So what I would absolutely love is if anybody uses a monitor, jump down to the comments, let us know what brand you use, pros, the cons, is there anything I've forgotten to mention in today's video that other people would find useful? Our comment section is amazing. If you've never been down there, just have a look below the video. We have wonderful comments down there. It's a wonderful community. I read all the comments, it's extremely helpful, and I really do appreciate everyone's input there. So whilst you're in the comments and you notice a little bird appear to someone's name, 
that means they are actually a member of my channel. So for less than a cup of coffee per month, they directly support me to make videos like this and I really do appreciate it. You actually get access to the 2023 digital calendar. Yes, we're almost halfway through the year, but there's still seven quality images to come. I highly encourage you to download that if you are a member and enjoy those. Um, I appreciate all the support. So if you like the video, give it that thumbs up. I really do appreciate you staying to the end, watching the videos. Take care out there, happy birding, and we'll see you in the next one.